Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the fly fish fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a small little uh, top water, uh, like a little dry. Uh, great for the rivers, great for the lakes. So it's a little uh, little sedge pattern. Um, you can tie it as big or as small as you like. Um, I tie these anywhere from about a size six all the way down to about a size twelve. Uh, maybe even a 14, depending, um, if I can find the right materials, because it gets pretty small. So, alrighty, so let's go on to here. So this is what we'll be tying. It's just a little, well, it's out of focus, but there you go. Just a little scraggly little uh, um, caddis pattern. So, so we'll start off with some uh, Zemperfly Nano Silk in white. Um, I use, like using white for all these because, uh, sorry, I'm going to nip that off there. Uh, I like using white for all these because I can always uh, just use a uh, use a felt pen and uh, color the head if at the end if I want. So um, that last one there I didn't, um, but I can quite easily with just a, a felt. So I'm just starting my thread here. Get it all the way to the back. come forward a little bit so I'm going to grab a uh, piece of grizzly but a really small one from the bottom of the of the cape here I don't want too big of a one uh, depending on the size of your hook obviously uh, this is a uh, hens BL 254 n in a size 10 it's a short shanked hook so <clears throat> nice little skinny guy here I'm just gonna Split that a little bit, tie it in, bring that back all the way to about where the barb would be. Okay, then I'm just gonna counterclockwise spin my thread. I'm gonna use some hairline uh, hair zero plus dub gold for the uh, body. It's really nice and hairy and, and, and spiky and it just works really well for these types of flies. I love this stuff for nymphs. I, I tie this one also with the Zemperfly, the Capoc dubbing, um, but it's not, it, it with the Capoc makes it float forever in a day, but it's not as buggy. So it depends on which one I want. I figured I'd show you guys the really buggy version because it's uh, super successful, this one. I mean, it, it Really works well on rivers and on lakes. Done really well on uh, during the caddis hatch in the middle of like June and July on some lakes. And then I've done really well on some of the smaller rivers that I fish, like the Skagit in BC and and uh, the Raven and a few others here in Alberta. And the elk and yeah, so. So I'm just giving this a, a, a spin right now, just letting it uh, knot up and then I'll let it come up into my dubbing, shorten that up a bit, and I can just let my bobbin do its thing. So right now my bobbin's just spinning around, just making this into a nice dubbing rope, right? So as you can see, I'm just spinning my dubbing, my bobbin, and I'm holding it up, and then when I let it go, the, the, the spin goes into the dubbing. So now I'll just pull out some of that extra out of the dubbing, so I don't want too thick of a body. <clears throat> Let's get started at the back here. I want a substantial enough body because I want that scraggliness. So and if there's any really long ones, just come in with your scissors and just get rid of some of these really, really long ones. I mean, I want, like I said, I want it scraggly, but I don't want the really super long little fibers there. So, so now take my hackle, and just polymer it forward. Three, four turns, one right behind. So compared to the last one I tied, this one is a little has got a little slightly longer, and that's that's fine. I like having several different versions. I do that with most of my flies. Um, I like having different versions of it. So I'll have some that are hairier, some that are not, some that are thinner, some that are th uh, thicker. Um, I like having a little bit of variety in my box just in case, right? 
So there's that portion. I'm going to see if I can just... Yeah. Unfortunately, my friggin' uh, my uh, little ring light died on me, so it's not as bright as it should be, but that's all good. So now, deer hair, body hair. Okay, just going to take a little bit of this, put it in my stacker. Um, I've been finding it's starting to get into winter here in Alberta and finding that uh, the static is kind of killing my deer hair. It's kind of ridiculous. I can't get it to come out of the, uh, off my fingers and I can't get it to come off the, uh, out of the stacker. And pain in the butt. So I had to use some static guard. I'm just stacking it right now. Hopefully it'll come out nice. Yes, it did that time. Yeah, I use some, uh, just use a little bit of this stuff here, some static guard spray. Right, it works really well. Just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit in the uh, stocker and a little bit on the deer hair itself. So now I don't want a huge wing here. So I might pick some of these out, might be a little bit too much. Let's see. That'll probably do right there. So I want this wing to come out to about the back of the hook. So about there. Just going to hold it with one hand there. A couple of loose wraps and then I'm going to tighten up. But I'm holding, as you can tell, see I'm holding on to that wing. Because I don't want it to spin, right? So there you go, finish fly. No, I'm kidding. Um, so now obviously cut off all the butts. Nice and tight to the hook. If you cut the odd non butt, it's not a big deal. So when I cut that all off, get all those little butts out of there. They don't move very well, right? So you want them out of there. So. And sometimes you can just actually just grab the butt itself like this and just give it a bit of a pull and it'll break off. If you can't, if you don't want to get in there with your scissors and risk cutting some of the other hairs. Get right in there. There's another one right there. Yeah, this can be time consuming sometimes. So one more right there. So now I can get in there and actually trim all that off holding my wing back I can trim this nice and tight it's good to have a real nice sharp pair of scissors um, to do this so okay so that's about it now I'm gonna go through that I want to tie that down really well so I'm gonna go right through those those ends spin my bobbin a bit to flatten my thread okay so now I'm going to take another hackle this time slightly bigger and I'm going to tie this one in by the butt section just tie that in right there your little piece there take just the tiniest little bit of dubbing that same dubbing at this time you can just uh, do it by hand you don't have to do it in a loop just come back go right over top of that there take your hackle bend it forward you kind of break the, the, the spine and then Train all your materials back as you come around. And one on top of each other, like one right in front of the next one. If you have a little bit of a gap, it's not a huge deal. You want that, you want that hair dubbing to kind of poke through anyway. There you go. Tie that in. Then I like stroking it all back. Building just the tiniest little head, 
holding tight on my my thread I take my my uh, hackle and I just give it a bit of a tear off again holding everything back and turn actually turning my hook up just so I can see it a bit better whip finish right behind the eye nice and tight and we're finished that's the that's the finished fly really buggy and scraggly and uh, it's the way I, I like them and that's the way the fish seem to like them I mean they look more natural so I just give it a bit of a brush out just to all right now just, I what I would normally do is I'll put these off to the side and I will put um, I'll put some floatant on them uh, now and let that float and dry in them um, it just it just helps help uh, with the with the floating uh, properties when you're out on the out on the river or on the lake so I just get that in there so like I said it's really buggy um, and it's just got a little bit of that, that that golden hue coming out of it that's what the that's the, what the fish will see right sometimes I'll put a, a bigger wing case on and sometimes I'll just give it a flatten like that so when you get when the fish see it from below it's got that that sp that spread wing case so but yeah so that's it that's the uh, that's the finished uh, little fly there so if you like that give her a thumbs up if you've subscribed thank you very much if you have not please consider doing so and once we hit a thousand subscribers on the page I'll be doing a draw to give away uh, a uh, selection of the flies that I've tied on this channel as well as a copy of the two books that I wrote on fly fishing. Alrighty, tie lines everyone.